that every human being has inherent right as a human being to exist, to have, they have their inherent rights, to ask for the fundamental basic rights, fundamental rights that we can sustain their living. Like basic factors like job and safety that can guarantee these people a, a certain standard of life as a human being. However, we believe that these undocumented immigrants in Korea are facing extreme discrimination and prejudice in today's society. These people are content, constantly being penalized by societies, and these people's rights are seriously violated in today's society. We need competition aim to solve these people's problems and to en enhance people's perceptions toward these people. So we have three arguments on the competition case in today's debate. First of all, I'm going to be talking about how why these people are infringed of their human rights and why we should ensure these people's rights. On to our second argument regarding is regarding why the people who chose to give birth in Korea especially must be guaranteed such rights. My second speaker is going to talk about our third argument, why this will further like, better protect people's these people against discrimination by changing the social conception towards these people. Directly moving on to our team's first argument regarding why these people are being infringed on their human rights. We the government supports humanitarian values, meaning we believe that any human beings must be ensured minimum quality of life. We believe that all humans have have basic rights, encouraged rights, regardless of which country they were born in, or which kind of appearance or like beliefs they hold into the exam. We think that that is a worldwide belief that is supported by the, by, by the general public, and that is already uh, that is already being agreed to and pursued by all, all countries in today's society. We believe that as humans, encouraged, the, the moment they become they are, they are given the birth, we believe that all humans have rights to rights to ask for state such basic standard of life so that they will be able to sustain their living with these kind of factors like safety, safety and food and shelter. Now, let's see how many people's rights are infringed into this test. We believe that these undocumented immigrants, it's the fact that these people are undocumented immigrants and that they had to stay, they had to come into Korea without like without the legitimate process. We think that these people were extremely poor. They would have they did not never had the capacity to be able to go come to Korea by the legitimate way. They have no room they have no work capacity to be able to do that. Second, we think that these people are forced to hide when they are living in South Korea. We think that this seriously shows that these people's rights are seriously violated in today's circumstance because that means that these people cannot have stable shelter. They cannot live in safe homes when they are staying in Korea. That's also a serious violation of their rights. Thirdly, we feel like that these people will not be able to have stable jobs in today's society. They are forced to work in factories that require them to do hard labor. Because also often we see the employers of these companies like, exploiting these employees by threatening them to threaten to report these people to the police. So these people cannot have stable jobs because they are constantly threatened by their employers and they are forced to be exploited by employers. And they are forced to work so much hours compared to the little wage they are getting into a sense. So we believe that people to have these people are not able to exercise their rights to safety, rights to have stable jobs, rights to have a basic standard of life in today's society. We think that this is a serious problem because everyone as humans must be guaranteed their right and her rights to sustain their living, to have a certain standard of life guaranteed in today's society. We believe that as the government, any government in today's societies cannot condone such cases in their countries. We believe that they should be able to be responsible for the people who are in their countries to make sure that all people in their countries are able to enjoy a certain standard of life because, especially because these few people have not created any harms of any kind of social harms in today's society. So moving on to our team's second argument regarding why the people who chose to give birth in Korea should be guaranteed their rights. We believe that the people who gave birth and didn't give birth have different, are very different when it comes to today's debate. Yeah. We believe that when they didn't give birth to their children, we the government cannot be sure if that number, if that undocumented um, residents are willing to contribute to the society. The government has no interest. Therefore, they might not be able to trust these people. However, we think that this situation is different when these people have given their birth to a child in South Korea. We think that demonstrates that these people, here these are. people are willing to be a contributing member of the society the moment they choose to give birth to a child. We think that that means that they're, they've been producing a member of the society who can be nurtured and grow into an individual who can contribute to that society. We think that also demonstrates that these people are these people have, are willing to willing to sustain their living in Korea, continue living in Korea, thereby engaging in many kinds of economic activities and then exercising their rights within Korea. We think that I'm going to explain why these people must be must be guaranteed the protection of the government so that they have their basic human rights. First of all, we think that these people are already so penalized by the society. We told you that, we, that these um, undocumented residents face extreme, extreme discrimination from the society. 
we society have prejudice and bias towards these people. An unconditional, like negative image perception towards these people that, that, that prevents people from having a positive attitude towards these people. These people are in front of their basic human rights because of that because of because of immoral factors that should not be that should not be that shouldn't be an important factor that changes the perception towards people. We think these people are penalized by their peers here, but people don't know. But also they have to, they face difficulty in their environment. We see that these people face extreme like extreme disadvantage when they're applying to applying to get hired or get certain jobs into a society. We believe that is extremely harmful uh, the, because these people are already social minorities in Twin society. That is why the government sees a need to make sure that these people have social, have human, they must be guaranteed social life. Why the government has to step in so that these people are also ensured of their human rights as well in Twin society. Secondly, we believe that since we believe that the children they give birth to in Korea also get affected highly by these people's like, negative perceptions. These children, as they, as they these people, um, these people require basic protection from the government, meaning they must be guaranteed a security home and food route to sustain their living in Korea. Also, we think that these people, these, these like children who are born, also have needs to uh, to be provided basic education so that they will be able to be a functioning member of society when they grow up as well. Now, so in this debate, we think government should not happy to condone these people's continuous living in their human rights. That is why I'm proud to support. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, before going on to any of our models, I would like to highly encourage the opposition team, the government team, to first read the motion and then talk about, uh, like, and then also think about their contradiction, their own motion, and then to their own case. So, Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, before going to any of our arguments, I'd like to clarify the original contradiction that they had under their case. So, Madam Speaker, their policy was that they were going to give those, um, give those, um, the res the permanent residential rights to those people, to the illegal immigrants, because they need to have their own humanitarian rights. But Madam Speaker, just for the fact that they're going to give it to those children itself, actually contradicts their own case, because it means that other people who did not have a child, who did not give birth in South Korea, they cannot have humanitarian rights. This is Madam Speaker, they believe that that's a contradiction, that every people, that um, illegal immigrants, um, like those people, um, people without the, without having a birth in child in child in Korea, we can, they cannot have humanitarian rights. We believe that the second speaker of the government team should come out and clarify how that how they need to exclusively give it to only the people who has children. So um, going on to our, um, the rebuttals, first thing we want to talk about how they talked about their own core arguments was about their how they're going to um, receive or how those people are going to receive humanitarian rights. Last people, we already told how there was a contradiction in the introduction. Secondly, Madam Speaker, we see that too bad. You, um, you chose to come to Korea. You were the ones that once wanted to come, even though you're not abiding by South Korean laws. We believe that this is wrong for the government to actually accuse and um, to draft the and give to shift the burden to the South Korean government, who does not have obligations, who does not have responsibility over, over those persons, over those people who actually did not abide by law. With Madam Speaker, we believe that it is very wrong for the South Korean government to actually um, have an obligation, even though they are not really their citizens. We believe that they can give them, they can provide them humanitarian rights if they become a citizen. And we believe that before that, then they should not choose them, they should not force to come to choose to come to South Korea and enjoy their humanitarian rights in their country. Secondly, Madam Speaker, we talked about how um, those people actually not have had an they have. They had a lot of poverty and that's why they came to South Korea. Yes, Madam Speaker, but we believe that's so inevitable for those people. The South Korean government has limited resources. We cannot give um, that is the reason why we do not, we do not give um, the president no thank you, Max. We do not give um, those, um, those rights for those people to every single illegal immigrant. First, we see that thank you, man, because we see that the government has limited resources. They have limited amount of people that they can take and they can um, actually take over and get the obligation and provide them welfare and all those privileges and give them also the duty. And lastly, Madam Speaker, um, we, what we would like to say, what we would like to tell them, encourage them to actually see the motion because they, as I already stated before, they did not actually prove the exclusive benefit, the exclusive way how, why we want to only give those um, humanitarian rights and give those residential um, those rights only to those people who have a, who have a child in South Korea. So having said that, I'd like to go on to our team's arguments. So our team has all of three arguments. Firstly, about how it's not a justification of this policy. Secondly, how there's no, how there's going to be a deterrence of the effect of this policy. And lastly, our second speaker would like to prove to you how this policy is going to bring up unfair prejudices and unfair situation in the status quo. So going on to our first argument, I'd like to um, explain this argument, no justification, and in three analysis. Firstly, I think when do we give a resident, um, when do we give the um, residents, residents um, permanent residents to those people? 
we give them permanent residence legally when they actually turn over, when they actually pass certain tests, which has um, about history, experience, time, and language. We believe that the reason why we evaluate those people um, before we evaluate those illegal immigrants to afford them to give them, uh, for their South Korean government to give them permanent um, residence is because we believe that those aspects, those history, experience, time, and language, is crucial for them to actually live and actually adapt to South Korean government, a South Korean system of um, running the government. We believe that this is actually crucial for those people to adapt, only not, but not only for those people we believe that most people should be aware of the um, context, uh, should be aware of the perspectives, values, and all of those things in South Korea. And we believe that, that is why South Korean government actually give those um, permanent residents to those um, illegal immigrants only when they have the test. You might ask me for a second now, why cannot we give the illegal immigrants those, um, those things, be on those the resi permanent residential rights? We believe that the reason why is that because the standard itself does not, um, illegal immigrants does not um, achieve the standard of giving a um, permanent residence. So first you might ask people, we would like to talk about the harms by giving those things, from giving the resident, uh, permanent residents to so illegal immigrants. The first thing you see that um, they did not already abide by the laws, Madam Speaker. So for them to choose to come to Korea illegally, we believe that the government does not perfectly have an um, obligation and responsibility to take care of those people who actually went out. They should be able to um, abide by the laws, and we believe that that is fundamental when giving a uh, right for them to live in South Korea. Secondly, Madam Speaker, we see that as I already emphasized in the models, there are no thinking about There are limited resources. For those people, for the government to actually think about. So, Madam Speaker, this is just a, it's just a basic, um, it's just a basic knowledge of when government actually tries to subsidize in one thing more, but another thing gets um, less resources, another thing gets less subsidized. So Madam Speaker, we believe that if we give those, um, if we give those rights and um, those government to um, further rights to uh, every illegal immigrant that has a child, Madam Speaker, we believe that the people who really want. And the, the government can really take those qualified, um, those qualified illegal immigrants who actually were qualified and can pass all those tests and knew the perspective, knew the values of South Korea. Madam Speaker, we believe that this is a fundamental problem on this government policy. And that's the second speaker we'd like to, and we want to encourage the second speaker would like to come up and talk about why this is not a problem under their policy and why this would not happen. Lastly, Madam Speaker, we believe that um, giving birth, um, giving birth, um, just for the fact that they gave birth in South Korea itself does not justify those people to become citizens because, as we already told you, the standard of achieving the standard of having a permanent residence in South Korea has a lot of uh, a lot of consequences, a lot of standards, because you need to know the values and perspectives of South Korea. So Madam Speaker, because we believe that they the fear of just for the fact that you gave birth itself does not mean that you achieve those standards, we believe that we should not give the permanent residence to the legal immigrants. So going on to our second argument, our second um, our second argument is about the deterrence that's going to happen in our policy. So Madam Speaker, we have to look at all the hearts of um, having illegal immigrants in our top of matter in the government of South Korea. So Madam Speaker, what we should do is that we should actually those qualified immigrants who are actually um, who are qualified to become a South Korean healthy South Korean citizen. So Madam Speaker, we believe that what we should do is we should deter those people who are illegal immigrants from coming to South Korea. And Madam Speaker, we believe that the status quo itself is a very good is, but is the best way to actually deter those people. Because as we see in South Korea we have a lot of illegal immigrants because we say that the, the, South, the current South Korean policy actually deters those people to come in the first place because we ban those illegal immigrants and we do not give permanent residents to those people. So Madam Speaker, we believe that um, by having um, deter those people with legal immigrants from happening, so that is why we're very comfortable. Thank you. But we are talking about today under uh, characteristic of permanent residence, which is ridiculous for the opposition side to yeah. argue under that kind of idea. So before going on to our any other, to our team class arguments, I'll first rebut to the previous speaker. So she firstly talked about that our policy that it has a contradiction. Well, Madam Speaker, our Prime Minister actually told you about firstly about the children that they need a basic protection such as home and food and care and secure. Madam Speaker, secondly. We told, we told you about the basic education, such as communicate, to communicate effectively, and also because these people are already so powerless by the society, such as discrimination, prejudice, bias, 
We totally have a system moral, and that's what we want to solve in this kind of uh, society. So moving on to my second rebuttal about they told us that South Korea had no resource, which is kind of strange. In my speaker, we told you that it is extremely immoral that, because they said South Korea government doesn't have any resource, and we told you that the right to life of humans are much more valuable or over money my speaker. So that's why we tell you that these kinds of resources are not the key part that we have to uh, think about. But the right to life is the most important thing that we have to concentrate on here. And moving on. So thirdly, they, they talked about that to achieve permanent residence, people should take tests. But Madam Speaker, as I told you, they're talking about these kind of tests under the idea of care, of the citizenship. Rather, Madam Speaker, today we are talking about the permanent residence. That we do not need taking tests. Rather, we ask them to just live in this kind of in this country, Korea, in a stable way. And fourth, they talked about the, about something about limited resource. So Madam Speaker, we are not talking about will provide them welfare. We're not trying to we are not trying to say say that we are providing them welfare. We are providing them right to vote or whatnot. But Madam Speaker, we are we are telling you that we are just giving them the permanent residence to live a stable life in Korea. As I as I keep repeating to you, Madam Speaker, and and to rebut about their second argument about. Uh, to a second argument, uh, first, I have two analysis. Firstly, not abide by the law. Well, Madam Speaker, due to the inevitable, inevitable and uncontrollable factors, also the factor, and uh, also the fact that these people had to hide in Korea, cannot justify that these people don't have the basic rights, Madam Speaker. And second analysis, these people having different values from Korea is not a problem because diverse. Sit down. Because diverse. These kind of perspectives must be respected, and, and we tell you this is not a harm given to the, given to today's society. So that's why we tell you these kind of basic lives should be guaranteed to these kind of people. So going on to our team's last argument about about social conception towards these kind of undocumented immigrants and how this is unfair to the whole child. So Madam Speaker, we tell you that uh, we tell you that undocumented undocumented immigrants as people who are to so. So Madam Speaker, citizens' attitude towards undocumented immigrants is that these kind of they depict undocumented immigrants as people who are doing an illegal thing, people who are dangerous. It, so since no one knows about them, Madam Speaker, well Madam Speaker, under the same logic for being a family member of these people, childs are un unfairly discriminated and we tell you this is problematic. So why? So firstly, we tell you that these childs are treated in an unfair way despite the fact that their parents are undocu undocumented immigrants. And because these childs have and mass speaker, well mass speaker, these childs had no harm to the society, no expression to be in this kind of critical situation. That's why we tell them this is totally unfair to these kinds of childs. But not only unfairly discriminated, but especially because these children are in, are in their own development of perspectives, Madam Speaker, but society is differentiating them with normal citizens, so they get to create their own perspectives that are normal compared to regular citizens. Hence, unfair for the, it is unfair for the ch children to be treated in this way right after being born, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, because we believe that the society is unfairly discriminating these minorities, in order to protect them, the government should give uh, permanent residence to these people. And we believe this is justified because they're willing to be a contributing member of the society. Because especially when they are trying to be a contributing member of the society by having a birth to a child in this kind of certain Korea, in a foreign country, that they're having uh, undocumented immigrants. And we tell you this is justifiable for them to be uh, to be let in to this kind of country because they're willing to be a contributing member of society and because of the fact that they're not having any harm given to this kind of country and because they are not uh, harming this kind of society and because they're and because these kinds of childs are are not actually having a direct harm to society and because and because these childs are unfairly discriminated and unfairly targeted by these kinds of citizens, only by the fact that they're and only by the fact that these kinds of citizens do not know these kinds of childs, and only by the fact that these children are uh, a family of these kinds of undocumented immigrants. We believe that this is unjustifiable for the opposition side to let these kind of things happen in today's model. So that's why we tell you that, that these kinds of um, permanent residents should be given to these kinds of people. So that's why you're very proud to be
deputy speaker was extremely uh, unsuccessful in tackling the rebuttals and the uh, arguments that we gave you in the first speaker. Now, how does that fare now? Let me move on to some rebuttals from the previous speaker. Well, first of all, he talked about how uh, we should talk about in the characteristic of permanent residents, which we think that there is no test. Well, first of all, then tell us what special characteristic that permanent residents have in the first place. We think that that was a burden of the government in the first place. They didn't was not test in a literal way. We were talking about test in the term that it is very there are very much processes that we must walk through in order to get the permanent president, in order to get the permission for the permanent president. So our, our meaning of test was not a literal meaning. Now we're talking about the test that they are going to go through many processes and they were going to go through many legal processes in order to get the permission. So uh, we think that the government took our points extremely wrongly in this debate. And then they talked about how uh, these people are penalized by society and human rights is important. So what they, what we can infer from these statements that their first speaker and second speaker said is that people who gave birth to children who are illegal immigrants can be respected by human rights, but people who didn't give birth to have, can uh, be ignore their human rights. We think that that is extremely contradictory to their stance because they were trying to look moral in that sense of how they are going to give human rights to these people. But we think that they, uh, because the motion is uh, narrow, narrowed into the point about how we are only giving these to people who give birth to children, we think that they just prove further on about what characteristic that is so uh, so important of the people who gave birth to the birth to children is uh, so important that these uh, per these people should get human rights while the other illegal immigrant groups should not. So we think that they were unsuccessful in uh, differentiating between the people who are illegal immigrants who don't have the don't have children and uh, people who are illegal immigrants who have children. We think that if they want to talk about human rights, they should they should have to give human rights to both parties. But that is not the case in the government's government today. So we think that they cannot uh, stand with the army in that in that part, in that sense. And then they talked about how there's a problem in the status quo because there is no human rights for illegal immigrants. So first so we if we say that human rights are so important, the core solution to the core problem of this debate should should be about how we're not going to make people illegally immigrate to deter people from illegally immigrating in the first place because there are going to be many harms caused to these illegal immigrants themselves. So we think that this debate should be the so we think that what the government should have proved is that how we are going to deter illegal, illegally immigrating people as well as some benefits that they provide. Like. But we think that they haven't actually solved the core problem, whereas our, uh, they are aggravating the problem. Because as we told you, in our second argument, we talked to you about how if government policy is passed, there, there are going to be more people illegally immigrating because now they don't have much of an incentive to not illegally immigrate. They are going to get uh, permission to per, uh, permanently live in these countries if they have a home. So we think that there is going to be not in, enough incentive, incentive for these people to not illegally immigrate in the first place. So we think that they are not solving the core problem that they are talking about. We think that this is an extreme problem solution mismatch with Madam Speaker. So let me talk about in a bit of argument that children are innocent. Well, first of all, because parents know that the children will be treated badly by society if they illegally immigrate in the opposition states, we think that they will be, first of all, deterred by, they will have to not to illegally immigrate. So we think that we are solving the poor problem that government gave to us today in this matter. We think that we are solving it much better because we're tackling the poor problem, not these facts about how they're going to adjust the country once they go to illegal immigrants once they go to illegal immigrants. But secondly, we think that discrimination can't be solved by their policy either. They never proved to us how they're going to solve the discrimination. We talked about how uh, children are innocent. Okay, children, let's say that children are innocent. But just because you gave them permanent residence, it doesn't mean that it, uh, it ignores the fact that their parents are illegal immigrants in the first place. So we think that if there's discrimination in the status quo, their policy is extremely ineffective in tackling these kinds of problems. So again, problem solution is their policy cannot solve the problems that we talked about in this debate today. So, and for the Madam Speaker, we think that there were several points that the government failed to engage in today's debate. First of all, that South Korean government should not get the sh get shifted burden just because they came illegally. And secondly, about how, how our policy deters the illegal residents from coming to South Korea. Thirdly, that they are the ones who chose to come to Korea in the first place when they knew that their human rights are not going to be respected. So, uh, that if they keep getting those illegal, Im illegal immigrants that really qualified 
the immigrants cannot get accepted because we have limited spots that the government can take in for the citizens. We think that these points were not engaged by the, uh, by the government, so we think that our students here please come up and prove to us and engage directly to us in the first place. Now, our team's current argument is about how it is very unfair for the people who keep the rules. So the process of getting permissions for permanent residence, residence is quite hard. It takes a long time and they have to go, go through many processes. So government is very selective in this process because they want to take in the best qualified people as we proved to you. So people have to go through many, many processes which is very hard. But in government policy, when you just come to a country without legal permission and just have a baby, you will get the same, uh, you will get the permission for the residence and you will get to have the same treatment as those who try hard to actually get, uh, get the get the permanent residence in the first place. So we think that this is extremely unfair for people who went through uh, all the legal processes. We think that we should have reward for those who actually kept the rules, kept the laws in the first place. We think that there should be punishment for those who did, who, who did not. So we think that the government policy goes against this rule and uh, this, this kind of unfairness also leads to the problem that we talked about in the second argument about how these people are not going to be not going to keep the legal rule because uh, because they are because just illegally immigrating is much uh, much an easy way. So we are proud to oppose. Thank you. Now, speaker, the opposition side came up and had a very very strange logic about informed consent. They try to tell you that these people chose to come to South Korea in the first place. And they knew they were going to be humanitarily simply be disvalued. Therefore, they said that since they already know the kind of circumstances, it is okay. So on the government side, we're going to prove to you throughout my speech two things. Firstly, Madam Speaker, we're going to prove to you why this was not an informed consent, where there was an outer force in their freedom, where there was an outer force that they were coerced to do and coerced to make certain decisions. Therefore, why it's the government's burden to provide humanitarian rights for them. But secondly, we're going to prove you why in the cases where they gave birth to a child, it's particularly then where the government has to intervene and put and guarantee this uh, permanent residence to these people. So two clashes coming from the government side. First is, is this a just law? And secondly, regarding harms and benefits, does it give, uh, what is the incremental harm of this policy? Does it give more harm or does it give more benefits? So moving on to my first clash, but is this a just law? Now the government side talked about, the uh, opposition side basically told you about three points. First of all, they told you, Madam Speaker, how they should, how these permanent residents, how, how these people, um, imi um, undocumented uh, immigrants, should know the value of society and how they should like understand the value of society. Now, Madam Speaker, we believe that knowing the value of social norms, social customs in the society has no relevance of ha having a permanent residence in South Korea because we ultimately believe that what they're talking about is citizenship because when you're trying to guarantee citizenship to a certain amount of people, so we believe that that certain, in that circumstance, we we believe that they have to know social norms because they are guaranteed right to vote, they are guaranteed welfare system, but we believe that certainly just guaranteeing the permanent residence is a completely different matter. And we believe that since they are already living in, the, in South Korea, we believe that it does not like give social harms. And in the premise that like undocumented pres uh, residents is not really having a great harm to South Korea, we believe that just guaranteeing the per permanent residence and giving them the status doesn't really give a huge like, harm. But secondly, Madam Speaker, they told you it's not our government's obligation because they didn't abide by our law. Madam Speaker, we believe that we have two rules. Firstly, we believe that these people came to Korea in the first place for economic reasons, because they wanted to have a better quality of life, because they believe that in their country it is simply just impossible for them to have a good economic status. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Madam Speaker, sit down now. We believe that it is certainly a lot of, um, it is certainly the key part where they start to um, have undocumented residents. Why is that? Because we believe that when they start to work in a certain in a certain corporation, and when they became an undocumented resident, we see that those people who are like uh, managing those companies are exploiting these people and threatening them of revealing their status of un un undocumented residency to society, and they're exploiting people and they're making a bargaining and they, they and they're trying to deal with these people to um, work and labor for longer hours and work for less salaries. Therefore, like that these kind of threatening is happening, these kind of bargaining is happening by South Korean people. Therefore, I believe that these people didn't have an informed consent, but they have to remain as these undocumented residents because of the reasons that they are threatened, because of the reasons that they have to work and they have an economic, they have to like build an economic status in South Korea. But thirdly, they told you how it's a contradiction of our side because we are trying to uphold humanitarian values, but we are only trying to uphold them to those who have babies. We have three rewards. 
First thing I want to speak on, next question. When the government provided permanent residence to people? As our Prime Minister clearly told you, Madam Speaker, we believe that the government provides permanent residence when, when they have certainty that these people will not like, just free ride and move to their another country and just like have a have, like, free life. Madam Speaker, we believe that when baby is born, when these people give a birth to a baby in South Korea, we believe that it gives a definite social message where they said that they are willing to just, like, they aren't willing to just leave the country but to nurture a child in this particular environment because we believe that since and like, settle down in this community, therefore we believe that it gives a definite social message and it, by giving a birth to a baby, we believe that it gives definite differentiation where they are not trying to, where it gives government uh, certainty that they are trying to willing, they are have a willingness to contribute to society, they have a willingness to contribute to country's education system, economic system and whatnot. But secondly, we believe that even if we do agree that it's not an informed, cons uh, it's, it is an informed consent, we believe that when certain people's choice start to give harm to third party, third parties such as children who didn't actually make the choice in the first place, then we believe that it's the government's job to intervene and stop that third party from getting harmed. But thirdly, Madam Speaker, we believe that with, we believe that um, the minimal quality of human rights, minimal quality of standard of life, uh, is actually implied applied to most people who are vulnerable minorities, such as children. We believe that when they are like only two of them, only like um, men and women, and we believe that they have a capacity to economically like bur uh, burden themselves and economically work and maintain their nurturing system. But we believe that these people who are like vulnerable minorities of children, we believe that they're completely different matter because they're just poor, they're from a perspective, and they're vulnerable minors in the society. Those people who lack social safety nets. So we believe that when people give a birth to a baby, we believe that it gives a huge new status of minimum quality of life because of this vulnerable minority. That, that is why we believe that it's not a contradiction. We believe that there's a clear differentiation between people who have baby who don't have a baby. That is why we, we want this crash. But secondly, what harms and benefits? They told you about three very strange points. First of all, they told you how there's a limited resource. We believe that it's very immoral for government to simply ignore the status and willingness of people to contribute to society, willingness of those in birth, birth or just like baby that are just born. We because we believe that limited resources is the least of their problems. But secondly, they told, told us about the deterrence. We believe that they're targeting a very strange uh, people because we believe that they're not going to be deterred by not doing our policy because we believe that that, that is never going to change. If that person was willing to, uh, was, had actually capacity to register as a permanent resident, then we believe that they would have done it already. But we believe that they, these people didn't have a capacity to. That is why we believe that this deterrence is not going to work. But thirdly, they told you how like, it's unfair. We believe that giving a birth to a baby is the so same social message of process of that they have to overcome when they don't have a baby. That is why we believe that this harm and benefits doesn't stand. That is why we take this point home. We believe the government of the government team was debating on the first motion, which was what should we give rights to illegal immigrants. We believe that this motion is not about should we give rights to illegal immigrants. We believe that this has a specified characteristic, which is should we give rights to illegal immigrants who have, who have given birth to their um to their baby. So let's talk from, from the Prime Minister how um what is a unique characteristic and what is a unique benefit and what is a unique obligation for the for the government to care for these people. However, um, what they said for their two constructive speakers was, was that um, was that they are poor illegal immigrants and thus the government has to um, the government has obligation. And in my speech, I'll prove why the government does not have obligation. And, and their whip suddenly comes out and says that um, because they they have they can like they can contribute to their society. However, in my speech, I also prove why just um, why um, three responses about how they would not contribute to our society, or even though they contribute to our society, it cannot be justified. In this debate, I have um, three questions. Firstly, is there a justification? The government has said that it would be an infringement of human rights. Four responses. Firstly, we urge you to read the motion again because if it was illegal, um, because according to your logic, if the if the illegal um, immigrants human rights was so important, why would, why do you give only human rights to um why do you only give the human rights to that um, who gave birth?
interpretation of why only immigrants that gave birth to the children, which they have not occupied for their whole life. <laughs> they have to prove why human rights should be conditional, which they are um, saying, which um, they're saying um, in their whole debate, yes ma'am. Madam Speaker, we clearly provide you a differentiation because we believe that when you give birth to a new baby that is vulnerable and minority in the society, we believe that there should be guaranteed a whole new minimum quality of life because we believe that it's a completely different circumstance, right? Well, firstly, that came out in your government way because your whole PM stated how illegal immigrants are in such a pity and we believe that um, this cannot be justified because I would explain my third question how there will not be contribu uh, contributions to society just because you had you are giving birth to your baby. And secondly, um, thirdly, we they state um, they should have to prove the exclusive benefit of um, making the illegal, um, uh, of illegal immigrants giving birth to a baby in Korea. And for, for the, we believe that we can, um, we, we believe that because there is such an infringement of human rights, people, of human rights, the government does not provide a solvency to, to this. We believe that it is the best to deter those people from coming. However, we believe that the fact that the, these immigrants are Ill illegal to come to Korea, we believe that this proves that they, this has a certain harm. However, by their policy, they're providing a solvency to live in Korea, but it is already illegal. So we believe that are, they are contradicting their own case, which they first illegalize immigration to Korea. However, they are just just letting them live in Korea, which we think that this is very contradictory. And secondly, they say that because they are forced to work, but they feel a very big pity. However, we don't believe that pity should be the standard of like permanent residency. And we believe that the, we have provided the standard of permanent residency, which is a capability to adjust to society. However, there was no response about how, how they have a capability to adjust to society. And they have to provide another standard, which they have failed. Secondly, they are not forced to work. And we believe they have made a choice. Um, thirdly, even though they, uh, even though we had made no choice to work, we don't believe that the government should, um, should get all those harms from these illegal immigrants. We believe that the fact that the government illegalized Im immigration of these immigrants is because it provides certain, certain harm to their own society. And the government, um, if the government really, really believes that they would not provide certain harms, we, want, we wonder why the government illegalized these um, immigrants from coming. We believe that because too many immigrants, that's too many immigrants that are not qualified to come to Korea, we believe that because there is a limited resource, we believe that um, the government cannot take care of the citizen, which becomes very irresponsible. So what we're saying is that we we're, not, we're not trying to infringe the human rights of these immigrants. We believe that we should first take the chair and secondly take only the qualified people to be to be um, to, to live in Korea. And we believe that these all, all of these points came out in government with, and all these um, those characters that came out in government with, which is too late and which cannot get a game ready. And also, um, these, um, we believe that if they really do these, so why not give a good life to all people? They have to prove why. Firstly, it is an illegal action. And secondly, even though they do not know their the culture, they have to um they have to be a citizen. And th thirdly, we believe that they have social harms, so thus they, they must be deterred um, from coming, which I have already explained. And secondly, I'm um, going to the second question about this contribution to society. And I believe that there are three reasons why we not why they do not give contribution to society. Firstly, we've stated that the fact that they came into Korea as an illegal immigrant is shows that they do not have a purpose to bring benefit to society. What they have a purpose is to benefit only their own, which is um, which is why they take they took an illegal means. So really that if they really want legal means and if they really want to contribute to society, we have these legal ways to come into the fact that they came as an illegal immigrant is to work and get wages, which is um, not which does not prove how to contribute to society. And secondly, they stated um, we do not believe why child um, leads to contribution. Because we don't believe that just having like a minor in society doesn't believe, doesn't make those people like justified to live in the in the country forever. And we believe that just because there is a child and the, the, the individual cares more about the child, it doesn't make their they qualified to live in that country. And thirdly, we believe that um we believe that they do not have to be the only factor that that have to gain these benefits. We believe that there are other people lining up to, to get into Korea. And we believe that the government has does not have any obligation, firstly, as they had made as they had made a choice to come into Korea. And we believe that because the people are lining up, more qualified people are waiting to get into Korea. We don't believe why they have to take these illegal immigrants as citizens just because they gave birth. And because in the whole debate, they have failed to prove why it has to be the only only illegal immigrants who gave birth. They dropped the whole characteristic of the motion, which of course, which all of the country urge to um, give a response to the question.
begin our speech. Let me uh, try to say something to the, uh, say something to the government. If you have eyes, read the motion. If you have ears, please engage to us. So the thing that having these two points clarified, let me move on to the core question of this debate today. So we think that in this debate, we have to weigh the harms and benefits of the policy that we have. So the harms are very simplistic. The first part was about the infringement of human rights. Well, first of all, yes, that is the problem, but their policy doesn't solve this. The problem, if, if the problem is when illegally, uh, people illegally immigrate, they get inhumane treatment, then the solution shouldn't be to encourage people to illegally immigrate because by increasing the incentive not to illegally immigrate, we think that the core and the right solution that is going to solve the problem is should be turn our best to protect these people's human rights. So we think that the, uh, by making them not trying to come to the countries in the first place. But secondly, we think that by this, uh, by this argument about infringement of human rights, then are you saying that people who give birth have the right to human rights, while people who don't have babies don't deserve human rights? I think we have to told you this in our second, third, and uh, even in the reply, but we heard no engagement to this whatsoever. They only talked about their own differentiation was about how having babies is a contribution to society. First of all, we don't understand why having a baby equals the contribution of society. There was no linkage between these two facts. Secondly, if they had the capability and they wanted to make a contribution so much and they had the capability to do so, we think that there is no need for this policy because they would have already taken legal means to do so. We think that if they were capable and if they are qualified, the government would, all, uh, could, would already select them by the legal process that we have. So we think that we don't need to give them these kind of, uh, we don't need to have this kind of policy, which is very harmful uh, to be in place if they want to solve this problem. And then second, was about how children will get harmed by this policy. Well, first of all, we think that uh, rather than talking about this, we should, we, should talk, we should talk about solving the core problem of this, of this debate, which is, as we both agree, about how illegal immigrants do get inhumane treatment, that they don't get uh, the human rights that they are needed. So we think that uh, children should, shouldn't be really a matter in this debate. We, we think that this debate should be about who deters the people from coming to illegal, uh, who deters people from illegal where these children will get harmed by the discrimination and the social perceptions anyways because just because of the fact that you got permission by the government for uh, uh, for, for the immigrants for living in the country we think that that doesn't mean that discrimination will suddenly decrease because all of the other people in the society already know that their parents are ones that came to a country by illegally immigrating we think that to solve this problem again to solve this core problem we should be we should be deterring the conflict. We should be trying to deter the uh, deter the people who are illegal immigrants, not trying to encourage them by decreasing the incentive to uh, by decreasing an incentive to uh, incentive to not come into the country. So, uh, so my next speaker, we are very proud to. Thank you. about how will we better ensure the rights of these people in today's society. But the opposition seems to think no. Because their whole argument, all of their speeches could be like shortened to just one sentence, no one's not scared of Well, we think that they, they won't be winning this debate by speaking of how they leave these people being crushed as social minorities forever. We don't think that's the type of thing we're talking about. These yeah, immoral yeah. opposition who's saying that these people should be good forever as they are as they are under pressure and so crushed by today's society yeah, 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 yeah. forever. So, in today's reply speech, I'll be addressing the two key issues that arose from today's debate. First of all, regarding do these people have basic human rights? Yeah, yeah. With the government team currently provided to you that as humans, firstly, these people have inherent right to enjoy a certain standard of life, and therefore these people's basic rights are being infringed in today's society. These, these people do not get to enjoy stable that life. They do not have state home. We say that these people's most basic rights are being infringed under today's debate. These threats are always threatened, threatened by like if threatened every day, especially in the workplaces. They're being threatened by the employers. They being like discriminated against like, from the society for, for things that they couldn't control, they didn't have control over like their appearances. Well secondly, we told you that also by having babies, like we we can clearly just demonstrate that these people are willing to be a contributing member to the status. 
But then the opposition tried to like very falsely distort our, distort our case by saying that we're saying we're saying that people with no children have no rights. Here, here well, that is right. simply not true. It clearly proves to you why undocumented immigrants, also like any other member of society, must enjoy like basic rights in life. But then the but then the but then why we prove to you how these like those with babies are different was that was that we saw that these people have an urgent need to have guaranteed their social and yeah, human rights. Yeah. Because we told you that these people are willing to contribute to society, also because there are third party harms to babies. And thirdly we told you that these people are extreme social minorities who are extremely vulnerable. That is why they require further protection, additional protection from the government. So on to the art on to my second question regarding like the regarding the like, harms and benefits of this policy. The opposition talked about very ridiculous harms that these people have like different values in today's society with Korea, and the South Korean government has no money to support these people. Well, firstly, we tell you we told you that these people having different values or perspectives are not a harm because simply that different choices or different point of views towards life should be respected. Secondly, we told you that economic capacity cannot be valued over human rights. We thought that that was a very moral attitude from the opposition team because that because the only what it, what we can interpret from their behavior is that opposition will choose to save money and condone people to be crushed by society and to live them the way they think. Thirdly, we they, thirdly we tell you that government to, they they told us that government is not getting any unique benefits from respecting these people. Again, we think that this should be this shouldn't be about what benefits are we are getting from these people, letting to li letting these people live into a society, yeah. but rather about how we would better ensure human rights for all people from today's life. Yeah. So let me end by comparing the models of government and the opposition type. We proved to you in today's debate how everyone has inherent human rights and why government have responsibility to make sure that everyone enjoys humanitarian values. But it is a really, really immoral statement like that fundamentally undermines the basic rights of these citizens. They try to distort our case and say it's a contradiction. Well, I ask you to like attack your ears if you have one. <laughs>